Welcome back, Brigandine Enthusiast. This is Double Seventy Seven Trigger here, and you are watching my leveling tactics video for every white and black monster. I was going to entitle it um, Supernatural, but there is unicorns, Pegasus, and nightmares in here, so I did not. So, basically, here for trying to level up these monsters, there are certain types of ways that you can level them up. You can either put them in the front row as the general uh, attacker, you can put them as a flanker where they're just staying on the sidelines, you know, on the side of the front row, you know, at the end of the corners, and you can have them move up to attack or stay there and defend, or you could have them in the back row where they stay in the back row and attack, or they stay in the back row and heal, or uh, buff up your army with some type of uh, protect spell or something like that. So, I'm um, starting off here with the unicorn, and unicorns are healers by nature, so you want to keep them in the back row. Uh, you could try pulling them out to keep up with a leader as a type of flanker, but that is very risky. So you could try that uh, just to have your leader advance, and you could um, they could take some damage and uh, you know heal up the leader and stuff. So you, know, you could try that. I guess you know that does work at times. Um, but uh, if you really want to level them up uh, efficiently, you want to keep them in the back row. And as soon as they level up, they can turn into a Pegasus or a Nightmare. Now, at this point, they both can flank. Um, they, they could both flank exceptionally well. But there's a difference with how they work. The Pegasus is primarily a healer, and the Nightmare is primarily a status-inflicting type of creature. So now when you have them as these things, they still can flank well, but you don't want to really turn them into a front row fighter. Even though they have very, very good evasion at this point, they can still get damaged very well, and uh, you, you could still lose them. So still try to keep them as a type of flanker, um, but, uh, you know, and back row works really well too. So now moving on to the Hellhounds. Now the Hellhounds, you would like to think that they're definitely front row fighters, but it's not totally true. They can work well in the front row, but they can get beat down pretty hard in the front row. So flanking is um, one of their best attributes. Uh, if you put them in the forest and you keep them in the front row, that'll work really well, and that could be your saving grace for the regular Hellhound. As soon as you move up and class up into the Fenrir, they can definitely be a great front row fighter. They'll have awesome evasion. Uh, they'll have decent attack, and they'll be able to split fames <laughs> spit flames from three spaces away. Uh, so that's uh, good for that. Um, next on is the uh, Griffin, and they're primarily front row fighters. You could use them as a flank or two, I guess, but a back row wouldn't do you any good because they don't have any back row attacks. So that's what you need to do for that. As soon as you turn them into a holy Griffin, then you can could put them in the back row, and they can do a wing attack from the back row. So they can cover all grounds uh, once you turn them into a Holy Griffin. But a frontline fighter is the best for them because they have amazing attack as soon as they turn into a Holy Griffin. And it just gets better. So, <clears throat> alrighty then. So next on the list is the uh, Ghoul class. Now, Ghouls are just the weakest in the game, and there's a reason why they cost the least amount of points. is because mostly they're just army fodder. And uh, they've got uh, they've got okay hit points, but uh, they got horrible defense, and they have bad attack ra uh, you know stats. So primarily keep them in the back row, and flank once in a while with them, just to have them level up. But they're very very weak. As soon as you turn them into a vampire, you can keep them as primarily as a flanker, and they will level up quicker as a flanker, you know, as a vampire. And as soon as you change them into a lord vampire, then you can try testing the waters as far as putting them in the front lines go. And, you know, have me as a frontline fighter because they will heal up a lot more, and they will absorb more hit points back. But um, I'd say 25 is the best level for them to just stay in the front lines and uh, work that angle. Um, so moving on, uh, moving into the angel class. Now the angels are definitely uh, they can start off as a front row fighter, but uh, more so they're going to have their better moments as a flanker or a back row fighter or healer. Uh, as soon as you change them to Archangel, 
then they can stay in the front lines if you want. But they were going to work even better in the back row because of their holy word. Um, you could put them in the front row still, and they do fairly well. Uh, but, uh, you know, as far as it goes, you're going to probably want to keep them as a flanker for the most part until you get them to serif. Now, when you have them as serif, front row all the way. They'll be fine. Uh, they can heal themselves up, and uh, they have extra moves that they can do that will help them out a lot. They can do area heal on your whole entire army, too. Uh, once you change them into Lucifer, you have to keep them in the front row because you get the spell Meteor Doom. And everybody's crazy about Meteor Doom, and it works wonders, uh, you know, for your army, and it uh, devastates their army. So that's kind of how you want to work that. Um, so let's move into the uh, Demon class now. The first uh, Demon first level demon you can use her as a front row fighter at times and she'll do fairly well uh, flanker definitely advised uh, back row you can do it just for the sake of keeping her in the back row in case you have a lot of uh, front row fighters put her in the back row and never do a curse and venom that'll work too as soon as you get into arch demon she gets a few more uh, spells that are uh, you know very tactful uh, you know dimension and weakness and uh, she'll work even better in the front lines, but uh, flanking is still well advised. Uh, so she can work the front lines and flanking. Now when you change her into Satan, it's definitely front lines because you're going to be getting Meteor Doom at that point, and uh, you're going to be able to crush the enemy army right in front of you. And you don't want to hit your own guys with Meteor Doom. So at that point, you really want to change you know, into a front line fighter if, once she turns into a Satan. Now, after that, you turn into Lilith, and it's just even better than Satan. It's just, it's it's a little bit better, and it's a lot better. Uh, and a reason I say just a little bit better, because um, you do lose the uh, triple black effect, and you gain all the colors, you know, the white, black, and blue. But that's, I don't know, some people don't care for that. I think that's okay. But the reason it's a lot better is because she gains a few extra spells. She gains a frost spell, which can help you against those that are red. And she gains a charm spell, which is uh, pretty interesting you can use. Plus her secret uh, uh, attack, her special attack, changes from paralyze into mesmerize. And that's so much better because you can, as soon as that works on any enemy, boss, um, you know, monster, anything, it will instantly mesmerize them and change them. So you don't have a miss ratio as soon as that happens. It'll automatically mesmerize them, and they're on your team from that point until they're cured. So uh, that pretty much covers all of those monsters. I'm going to have a few more videos at the end here that you can uh, click on um, the link to them. And it's going to show you the rest of their colored uh, monsters that are in the game, uh, Brigandine, and how you know to wisely level them up. So that's pretty much the end of it, and uh, this has been Double 77 Trigger here talking to you, and I will see you later. Thanks for watching.